Hello everyone, welcome to Shorthand Battle. I am Divya and I am going to dictate you a general passage of 800 words at the speed of 100 words per minute. So get ready for the dictation. 3, 2, 1 and go. Madam Speaker, I am extremely grateful to a large number of members of this house who have all actively participated in this debate which was initiated by Shri Huda. Almost all the members who have spoken have supported the bill. Some appeared to have supported it wholeheartedly and some others very grudgingly. I do not think Dr. Shashi's heart is into this bill. Therefore, he started by saying that this bill has four fatal flaws and it will not achieve anything and ended up by saying that it can become very draconian. It can be either of two, it cannot be both. But then he made a point that the real issue lies in getting information internationally and attacking the sources of black money. I think our homegrown friend from Rohatak, his experience was much more than your experience from Manhattan because he knew the history of evolution and he completely had the clue on what history is. There was once a time Shri Huda rightly mentioned it when money crossed over geographical borders, the territorial jurisdiction of your laws and your investigating agencies almost came to an end. Therefore, to get evidence internationally which is outside the shores of India was extremely difficult. So, if a criminal crossed over into Bangladesh or Nepal or Pakistan or if the evidence of his crime was hidden in a Swiss bank in Geneva or in any other tax heavens, it was almost next to impossible for the government of India to get details of that information. So, the first stage is that we attempted to get this by relying on the principle of dual criminality. The principle of dual criminality was that if the offence was per se a taxation violation, the cooperating state would not give information. It had to be a criminal offence, an offence under investigation, it should be an offence in both the territories. It should be an offence in India and in the other territory. This procedure continued. A lot of our struggles to get details from Switzerland used to be that we had to first prove that it was not merely tax evasion but these were profits of proceeds of crime and that crime itself was a crime both in India and internationally in that country. Thereafter, we enter the second stage that how can people who hide money in one country and keep it in another are dealt with. The civilized jurisprudence requires that the countries cooperate with each other. Therefore, information was being sent on the basis of various corporations treaties like the Double Taxation Avoidance Treaty Clause 28 that you spoke of. That is the stage we are now in. But this stage is also not enough because we have information. For instance, take the HSBC accounts. The information about the HSBC account in Geneva is stolen by somebody. It was taken to France. That stolen information is made available 
to various countries by the French government. So, we have a list of hundreds of names from India people who have account in the HSBC bank in Geneva. Sir, the Swiss authorities have told us that they would not cooperate on the basis of stolen information. So, the revenue secretary led a team of officials and entered into an arrangement. They asked the Swiss what if we are able to get independent evidence independent of the stolen information against the same people and the Swiss said that they would cooperate. So, there is a written arrangement joint release was issued. They are now cooperating in a number of cases. Some of them are very significant cases and we have got cooperation. When I went to attend the World Economic Forum, I met the Swiss ministers concerned and we furthered that cooperation. But this is still a very slow process. Now the world is moving towards what is the core of the whole issue. G20 has taken an initiative where the Honorable Prime Minister made a commitment and we are active participants that we will join the global effort for automatic exchange of information. The G20 initiative will lead to a situation where about 2017 whoever are Indian citizens who transact internationally their details are automatically conveyed and if we find that any of those details are unlawful we are entitled to take action simultaneously under the domestic law of the United States and the United States is requesting other states to enter into treaty obligation and there will be a bilateral automatic exchange. Now reports have come with regard to the various committees that we have appointed but I cannot give you an authentic data on the floor of the house of as to how much money is there. Therefore, it is different from what Integrity International says or some of the agencies say. These are all indicative figures. I cannot be too specific to give you the figures which you want to know. We are considering the reports which have come out in the recent past stop.